Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us on TCM for this week's edition of Silent Sunday Night. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. We're celebrating Halloween all month on TCM, and the macabre gets its due in our silent films as well. Up next, we have one of the earliest big screen adaptations of the Robert Louis Stevenson novella, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This version is considered by many to boast the best performance of the tormented doctor of all the screen adaptations. From 1920, starring John Barrymore, it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. If you're not already familiar with the famously terrifying tale, I'll give you the big picture. The proper and benevolent Dr. Jekyll begins to wonder whether it's possible to separate one's divine nature from one's baser instincts, the good from the bad. So he develops a formula to test his theory. The concoction turns the doctor into a truly devilish and depraved creature. That's Mr. Hyde. Although Jekyll has another formula to restore him to his normal self, his evil side becomes stronger and stronger every time he becomes Mr. Hyde, threatening to consume Jekyll entirely. With each transformation, Hyde begins to look more like the monster he is, a phenomenon achieved as much by John Barrymore's talent as by his makeup. In the first transformation scenes, Barrymore effectively conveys the deranged Mr. Hyde with contorted expressions and mannerisms. Makeup is only used as the film progresses to demonstrate how Hyde's appearance grows more beastly the more dominant he becomes. Barrymore gives a virtuoso performance that many critics believe surpasses two outstanding sound film portrayals of Jekyll and Hyde by Frederick March in 1932 and Spencer Tracy in 1941. This version is vastly better than another silent version released the same year, 1920, featuring Sheldon Lewis in the title roles. From director John S. Robertson in 1920, here's John Barrymore as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. While shooting Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, John Barrymore was also in rehearsals for Richard III on Broadway. He was a famous stage actor at the time he only dabbled in the movie business. So in addition to putting in an arduous performance as dual personalities in the film, Barrymore was weighed down in a suit of armor engaging in battle stunts on the sweltering stage every night for the play. He also made frequent trips to see his lover, Blanche Ulrichs, a playwright who used the pseudonym Michael Strange in Atlantic City. By the time Barrymore finished Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he had spread himself so thin he had a nervous breakdown, had to recover in a rest home for two months. Up next, we continue our horror theme with this week's TCM Import. It's a murder mystery and the first film directed by Bernardo Bertolucci. 